Hello and welcome to Standard & Poor's Credit Matters TV. Today, I'm here with Luisa Vilena, Associate Director at our Sao Paulo office, to talk about the recent rating action on Brazilian telecommunication company Oi. Hello, Luisa. Hi, Flavia. We have recently downgraded OI from triple B minus to double B plus. Why the downgrade came just now as the credit metrics deteriorated only mildly from our previous expectations uh, back in May of this year? OI's downgrade followed the recent news about the investments made by Portugal Telecom on Rio Forte's commercial paper, amounting almost 900 million euros, uh, equivalent to about 2.7 billion reais, which was not repaid. Prior to the downgrade, we had a triple B minus rating with a negative outlook uh, following the merger between OE and Portugal Telecom, reflecting the pressured credit metrics and the challenges to improve cash flow generation and to sell assets in order to reduce debt. The lower cash position at Portugal Telecom related to these investments in Rio Forte, uh, which we expected would be used to pay down debt, reduces our expectation of OE's deleveraging trend and increases the concerns uh, related to Portugal Telecom's internal controls. As a result, we understand that the credit metrics are not aligned with a triple B minus rating and the outlook horizon anymore. So, are you saying that Portugal Telecom's investments in Rio Forte's commercial paper resulted in the downgrade? Well, it's a combination of two factors. First, we revised our management and governance score to fair from satisfactory. Uh, following the investment in Rio Forte, which we understand wasn't clearly evaluated by management and communicated to OI and other interested parties. This indicated a deficiency in Portugal Telecom's internal controls and corporate governance. However, this score change by itself didn't result in the downgrade, but weighted on our view of a negative comparable rating analysis uh, on a company that already had pressured credit metrics for the triple B minus rating. You just mentioned that OE has a negative comparable rating analysis. What is that and how does it factor in OE's downgrade? The comparable rating analysis can lead us to raise or lower the anchor of our ratings by one notch depending on our view of the overall characteristics of this company. The downgrade on OE reflected our revision of the comparable rating analysis to negative from neutral. Uh, because our forecast indicates an average debt to EBITDA close to four times by the end of 2014 and 2015, which is in the lower band for a significant financial risk profile. And in addition, we now assess a uh, company's management and governance score as weaker, which compares unfavorably with other triple B minus rated companies. But now we have a stable outlook on OI. What supports this outlook and what are the main assumptions for the expected improvement in the cash flow generation of the company? OI has been implementing several cost-cutting initiatives in order to improve margins and cash flow generation in Brazil. We also expect that the company uh, will benefit from operational synergies with Portugal Telecom, uh, mainly in the integration of IT platforms and in savings in several uh, administrative expenses. As a result, we expect the EBITDA margin close to 32% by the end of 2014 and close to 33.5% by the end of 2015. The stable outlook also reflects our uh, view that OE will prepay down debt uh, with the proceeds from the capital injection, what should reduce interest payments, and also that uh, tax benefits uh, related to the merger will reduce tax payments uh, from 2015 on. As a result, we expect gradual improve uh, in funds from operations and in credit metrics over the next years. Do you factor management's intention to sell assets in the current rating and outlook? Well, our base case scenario doesn't consider any potential asset sales in cash inflows for the company uh, because we don't know which assets uh, we could sell for what amount and when this would be completed. Um, however, we treat this on a qualitative way because these potential asset sales could accelerate the debt reduction and improvement in credit metrics. Thanks, Luisa. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.